All right, so you and your friends have been playing Rust for a little while. You've been out on the servers. You know what the world is like out there. And now you've decided that you want to start a Rust server for yourself, but you don't know if you want to pay for it yet. So why not set it up on your local machine and see what it's all about? Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you everything that you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. If you take any value out of today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button, share it out to your friends, and of course subscribe if you haven't already. Anybody that's been watching my channel for any length of time knows how incredibly easy this process is. There's only a couple of steps and very few resources that you need to have. If you're wondering why I'm redoing this video, it's because the other ones are starting to get pretty old. All right, so we're just looking at my desktop here right now. I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this Rust server. You can call this whatever you want and you can also put it wherever you want on your computer. We're going to go into that folder and we're going to create two more folders. One of them is called Steam CMD and the other one can just be called server or whatever you want to call it. It's important that you know whatever file names you do use here is they don't have any spaces in them. The next thing you need to do is you need to go to the link in the video description down below and download Steam CMD. So I'm just grabbing the zipped folder from my download and I'm going to take it back over to the folder that we've now created. Let's go into Steam CMD and let's just pause to that in right there. And of course we can also extract this zipped folder right to this very same location. And let's delete the original zipped folder. Let's go into that folder there and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this file out of here and, and I'm going to go up one layer and I'm going to pass that in there and take this original folder out. So now as you can see I've got my Rust server root and then Steam CMD and then I've got Steam CMD.exe. So we're just going to run that right quick. And what this is going to do is it's going to install all of the files that we need to have in order to set up our Rust server. And if you're on potato internet like I am, it could take forever. And now that that's all installed, I've got my file folder that I've created on the left hand side and I've got Steam CMD running on the right hand side. We can do these kind of simultaneously. So let's just go up one folder so we can go into our now server folder here. We just want to click on this address location right here and copy that to our clipboard. Now we can go over to our Steam CMD and now we just need to log Steam CMD in. Now I suggest you log in anonymously Honestly, you can use your Steam credentials, but you don't need to, so why bother? So just log in anonymously. Make sure you spell it correctly. Once that's done, we need to tell Steam CMD where we want to install the files that are required for our Rust server. So the command for that is force underscore install underscore dir, and then we're just going to post it in that address that we grabbed earlier for where our actual Rust server is. If you get this yellow warning here that says, please use force underscore blah, 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 before login, don't worry about it, just ignore it. And then we just need to tell Steam CMD that we're ready to actually install those files. The command for that is app underscore update 258550. That number 258550 is the Steam ID for Rust. And again, depending on your internet, this could take a couple of minutes. But what this is going to do is actually install all of the files that are required to run your server. And once that's done, we can be done with Steam CMD. The rest of the work we're going to do is in this folder right here. So the next thing we need to do is actually create the file that is going to run our server specifics. So let's just right click in here. Let's create a new text document. And we can pretty much call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it Rust server start and I'm going to change the extension from txt to .bat. It's going to ask are you sure you want to do this and yes of course I do. A BAT file is basically just a Windows executable file similar to exe but not. And we're going to right click on that file and we're going to open this up in our favorite text editor whichever one you decide to use I'm using notepad plus plus. So I've just grabbed the code that you're going to find in the video description down below and then we're going to make some changes to it if we need to and you're going to need to adjust this so that it fits your application. The first thing we need to do is tell our batch file where it can find Steam CMD. So if you remember from before we set it up in this folder right here and we can just copy this address location right here if you want to and we want to replace this section right here before the Steam CMD.exe. It's the executable file that we're telling the batch file where it is. So yours may look something like that. The next thing that we need to define is where our Rust server is. So same thing as before. Let's go to our original folder and we're going to grab this server location right here. Same thing, we're going to click on the address bar at the very top, go back over to our batch file, and we're going to change this location right here. So as you can see here, the first line of our batch file is essentially doing the same thing that we did manually a minute ago with Steam CMD. So obviously we're telling the batch file where to open Steam CMD from. We're telling it to log in anonymously, and then it's going to run this command right here, force underscore dir, same as what we did before, and it's going to go to the correct location because we've now changed it. And then of course it's going to do app underscore update 258550. Once it's done with all of that, it's going to actually quit the application for us. And then it's going to start running all of our Rust server details. 
Now this gets pretty important and can get very extensive. The example batch file that I have listed in the video description down below, it's just kind of like the basics of what you absolutely have to have in your batch file. So I suggest you leave your server port at 28015, your Archon port at 28016. Put your query port at 28017, your app port at 28018. Now, all of this port information is really only important if you want your server to be publicly accessible so that your friends from outside of your network can actually join your server. All of these ports that we've defined right here, we will then need to open in our firewalls in order for people to be able to access in. I've done a couple of videos on port forwarding. I'll put one of them in the top right hand corner. So here's where you get to decide what your server is actually going to look like. So server seed, you get to determine which map is actually used on your Rust server. And you can use places like rustmaps.com to figure out which seed you want to use. So server seed combined with world size, now you know what map is going to appear on this server. Max players, pretty self-explanatory. Server host name, this is how it's going to appear if you do your port forwarding. Your server host name is what's going to appear in the Rust directory as long as you've done your port forwarding. Server description is obviously where you get to write things about your server, telling players that are connecting to it what they might expect to see or whatever information you want them to have. This would be a really good place to put your Discord invite link. Another really good place to put your Discord invite link if you don't have a website for your server yet would be in the server URL. That way when players press escape while they're in game and click on the view website button, it's actually gonna take them directly to your Discord. Server header image obviously is the header image that shows up when somebody clicks on your server in the Rust server directory. You've got a lot of creative freedoms there. You can put pretty much whatever you want on a server header image. Obviously be smart about it. Your server identity is incredibly important, especially if you're gonna have multiple servers running out of the same instance. So this is how it's going to be identified and you'll see what I mean when I actually run this, I'll show you. But just make this make sense, something that identifies what this server is all about so that you can recognize it. You're only gonna see this from the back end, but it is important that you know what it's actually indicating. Archon password, incredibly important, don't leave this blank. But you're really only gonna use this if you're connecting to your server using something like Rust Admin, or if you have a Discord bot that requires Archon access. And that's pretty much it. That's the absolute bare minimum that you can have on your Rust server so that it makes sense. Of course, you can strip this down further, but for your average user, this is what you're gonna wanna have. So we can simply save this and we can now run that file. Now this might seem a little bit repetitious because it's gonna go through and actually update your server again. It's going to reinstall all of those files that we did a minute ago when we were just logged into Steam CMD manually. The reason I'm pointing this out to you is because it's important that you recognize every time you restart your server, it's going to reinstall everything. It's going to check for an update from Steam and install obviously the latest update. This is obviously more important if you were installing Oxide, if this is a vanilla server for you, those kind of details don't really matter. It's good that your server updates every time you restart it. If you are going to be installing Oxide on this server, that'll be coming up on a later video because there's a couple of really important things that you have to do to the batch file in order to run Oxide. Once it's done downloading and installing the latest version of Rust, it'll go ahead and start booting up your server. This can take a couple of minutes. Be patient. Any of these yellow warnings that you see, just ignore them. The only warnings you ever really need to worry about is if they're red. If you get this warning asking if it's okay to go through your Windows firewall, just click on allow access. If you see your console spamming a whole bunch of information, it's okay, just let it continue doing its thing. As long as nothing's in red, you're good. And then once you've got all this information in the bottom left-hand corner there, it gives you your server ID, your max players, all that other stuff. You're good to go, your server is online. And if you just wanna hop in and play on a vanilla server, you're 100% ready to go, you can log right in, which I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a minute here. But because I know most of you are here because you wanna be able to fly around and you wanna be able to spawn in as many things as you possibly can, you need to make yourself the owner of this server. So in order to do that, you're gonna to have to know what your Steam64 ID is, and then we're gonna type in owner ID space, and then we're gonna put in our Steam64 ID. And if you're gonna have multiple people in here written as owners, you're gonna to wanna to put in a name in quotations there just so that it's written to the file with a name so that you know which Steam ID goes with which person. So we can hit on enter, and then we need to write that to the configuration file, and that command is write CFG. Config saved, perfect. So now we can minimize this and I'm gonna actually show you something real quick before we actually log into this server. So you remember earlier when I was talking about the server identity in your batch file and how important it was? If you go into this server section right here, this is where it's gonna save all of the information related to this one server. And this is the server identity right here. You saw me put in there 2024 test server and we can go in here. This is gonna have all of our map saves, our blueprint saves, all of the pertinent information for this specific server. So when it comes time for you to 
to wipe your server if you want to wipe blueprints and everything all at the same time you just simply select all of that and delete all of these files when the server is offline reboot your server with a new map seed and a new map size and you're good to go it's going to reload everything and everyone will start over fresh so because this server is hosted on my local computer and i haven't done any port forwarding yet i will not be able to access this server using the normal methods so instead let's hit f1 brings up our f1 console and you would type in there client.connect space localhost colon and if you followed along exactly like i did it your port would then be 28015 if you didn't and you use different port numbers of course you'd want to put your server port whatever you defined it as in your batch file hit enter hit f1 to make your f1 console go away and just wait till it boots you into the server having a look at our server console while i'm logging in you can see that it has said right here blah 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 has logged in with auth level 2 that means i'm the owner of this server so when i get into this server i'll be able to fly and spawn and all that good stuff while we're waiting for that to log in i should explain this real quick you might get a red warning up here that says rust companion server connectivity test has failed disabling rust plus features all that means is the app port that you defined in your batch file doesn't have outside access which also goes back to port forwarding so you'd want to add that as a port forwarding rule if you're having outside connections to your server and you want them to be able to use the rust plus app and one eternity later we're actually in on our brand new server so just to test everything out you want to be able to fly around you want to go into your f1 console again type no clip close your f1 menu and now you can fly around as much as you want and if you want to be able to spawn items in you can just click on the items menu and let's grab ourselves a minigun because they're super fun and we're going to need a tool bench Let's just go down here somewhere, plop down a tool bench. Let's reload our minigun, and there we go. Badass, right? So there you go. That's how you get your own Rust server up and running. If you want to be adding plugins to this, then you need to either install Oxide or Carbon, and I'm going to be showing you that on the next video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.